like the spirits or even the abyss. Mm. Darkness and the abyss, thick clouds of the sky, you know. Yeah, that's Psalm 1811, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it just me or is he very low? Yeah, I think it is. I don't know. I keep turning mine up, but am I am I coming in all right, or am I? You're you're low. I mean, I can hardly hear you, but I can hear you. Okay, I, maybe it's I, my. Uh... I can hear everybody better now, but I just turned mine up. So, can you hear me? Oh yes. Yeah. All right. How's everybody doing? Good, and yourself? <laughs> <A little simpler>. <laughs> <laughs> Tired. I bet. Tired. Exhausted, man. Mm. Probably see them. Great footage. Yes, huh? the footage is unbelievable. Oh my gosh! So I didn't see the end of it, but did those cows get out? We're still working on that. Oh, you're working and on it. That is a what is it? What is that called? A saga. <laughs> Continuing yes. saga. <laughs> to be continued. You left us hanging on the cliff, Jonathan. Well, there's <laughs> more. We we went in and got more footage, and going back again today. Because, uh, look, guys, you don't just put 200 cows in your pocket and walk out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happens. You don't just stick them in the trunk of your car and let's, like, let's get out of here. In the dense jungle, man, listen, there was heavy equipment that had to be trucked in there. Mm -hmm. First of all, the guy that owns the cows does not own the land. He's only leasing it. So, oh, wow. Right? So he, he actually lives in Waimea. Is it Waimea, Darla? He's a cowboy, a Hawaiian cowboy from Waimea, which is the other end of the island, right? Like, he's like third or fourth generation um, Hawaiian cow. So he's, his family's been on this island for a very long time doing cattle, right? So they're leasing this land all the way down in Puna, and he lives on the other end of the island. So people are getting upset. How could he be so insensitive, you know, Reckless and leave it and abandon like he abandoned his cows. They did not. That's not what happened. He was in the process of getting these cows out, and civil defense put put the brakes on him because he's going in one way beach road and evacuees are going out the other way. He's trying to go in with big bulldozers on trailers. And uh, you you ever seen the wide load going down the road, guys? Right with a big bulldozer. Oh, yeah. You you see the footage of these beach roads. We're talking about a pig trail through through jungle. It's not like a, a, a freeway, right? So that was problem one that set him back, right? So he had a over $100,000 bulldozer sitting in uh, the property as he was using it to clear out some of the, the heavy overgrown trees so they could see the cows from above. Right, because this, this place that they were in was about 400 acres. Well, that got overtaken at the gate entrance where the bulldozers was. And so it took out the bulldozers, the ones he had in there, and took most of the land. Run them cows all up to the high ground and just to different places. They were, they were scattering. They were panicking. And um, it got worse and worse so as time. But that, that flow on that side slowed down and started creeping really slowly instead of being the fast moving, uh, uh, I mean, uh, lava. And, uh, fortunately has provided time to get in there and to clear, but, he, but even still that, that, uh, uh, flow is stacked up about 45 or 50 feet. So you're standing on the ground and you can see Darla's kind of sunburned. You see her on her face. It's because Darla yeah. was 20 feet from a 40 foot wall of uh, uh, lava yesterday um and it's slowly inching moving forward like this and uh allowing time and there's pinch off points i gotta sh i gotta show you show you something guys um well nobody freak out okay i'm a little worried about letting doing this on youtube my mom seeing this all right i'll tell you what i <laughs> I'm jealous, brother. You there with third phase of the moon. <laughs> I love them guys. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah they are. Uh, Darla thinks that you has got something in, in, in mind for them. 
I would have to agree with her. I mean, how? We were talking to you last night, Jonathan. Yeah, she, she's, they're not, by the way, they're not believers, but uh, they know there's things going on. They're kind of, there's what, what you'd call a, a semi-awoke pagan or something. I don't know. They're aware. They're just not they're just aware. They're not just not following in you and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think that's why we had cross paths. Yeah, I get that feeling too. You guys, you guys met up for a reason. And when I seen that video, I thought, because I first saw them and I'm like, okay. And then I saw you shoot past with the camera. I'm like, oh, is he there with them? Oh, awesome. And, and right then and there, I just, I got this feeling that you were meant to cross their path for a reason. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so um, they were with us yesterday. Um, to just kind of recap, here's the Fisher system that's opened up on this ridge line here. For the most part, the first part of this all dumped toward McKenzie State Park and the ocean down this way. Uh, but then something changed. All of the Fisher activity north of uh, everything started slowing down. Like right now, currently, Fisher 18 is just kind of like spurting. Everything's backed up, and now Fishers 8 and 7 are uh, are what's going off. Matter of fact, I got – I probably – me and maybe two other people have the only footage of Fisher 7 and 8 being born. But it was just like sparks shooting up. Now this thing is 250, 300 feet, 400 feet in the air at some point because it changes. The pressure changes. Uh, so, sorry, Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, w where is the power plant? Power plant's right, right here. And see, and it hasn't gone over it. It's gone over some of it. Oh, okay. It went over uh, four or five different wells. There, there are yeah, yeah. four or five wells that are completely covered. Oh, you, you, uh, do you remember the picture I showed you? There was a there was a volcanic eruption in Westman Air, yeah. and, and the lava it stopped at the graveyard, where it's where it's a quote from the Bible, mm -hmm. I I live, therefore you shall live. So he is in perfect control of the lava. Oh, I I know. Yeah. Let me show you what happened, uh, because um, when Fisher's eight started kicking up and just basically going from a, a dip in the valley because it's a low point right down through that where that crack is. I had to walk down into where the cracks, you remember the cracks in the ground and stuff? That's all in, in this area. So that has risen up with the lava that's that's come out. It's kind of just stacked. As it's come out, it's stacked. Cone, a legitimate cone, like a volcano cone you see in Guatemala started forming. That's what they have at Fisher 8 now. And everything is dumping off the backside going uh, this way. There's a, there's a huge river that's uh, running all the way down to Capojo and spilling into the sea there. Now, Jason, our, our friend, our brother, a, um, a member of a, uh, what they call a hui in, uh, here in, in the, the deep jungle area, guys, it's hard to get there. Um, beautiful area was under threat his whole community this this actual finger these rivers was coming it kind of looks like a serpent darling you look at that looks that like, looks a, like a snake head yeah it looks like a snake head um in there i'm surprised at how much more lava there is in that picture than just like a week or two when you showed it like i am i'm sitting here literally amazed because like before there was just a little bit and I mean like it's not a little bit no more like now I'm really concerned about you guys <laughs> um, yeah so we're we're okay we're not when I show you you might be concerned about what I'm about to show you more and more we are now we're 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 not in this threat we, we currently where I'm at is somewhere in this area right here north of all of this. Oh, okay. All this is just, blowing just, south and away from us. But just be careful when when you go to, doing videos. I mean, yeah, yeah. Cause so. you like to get up close to that stuff. 
Well, you know, sometimes it's closer than you should, you should actually be. And it's what I'm, I'm about to show you. You see this little, this little area in here completely surrounded on all sides. Now this is kind of inaccurate. This is not wide open like this right here. This is all filled in and, and is virtually some places it's breached the fence and like come like this and back. So, but this part is pretty accurate where it channels in here like this. So it's completely surrounded by lava. Okay. So, um, bear with me now. I'm going to try to bring up. Did you go in there? Good question. Did <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, la, oh la la, oh la la. Yeah, I went in there. Oh my, I'm going to be praying for you extra hard, brother. Oh, whoop, was he? Okay. It was amazing how trees could come down so fast when you didn't oh, expect it. Right? Yeah. What happens is it gets vaporized, completely dried out from the roots all the way to the top. The top actually will start snapping off because it's so dry, like a mm -hmm. dead limb. Uh, oh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. They, they'll dry out very fast. All mm -hmm. right, so what you saw a minute ago was a map of the snakehead. This snakehead right here. This is Jason's house right there. Uh -huh. And uh, these cows are kind of up in here. You see, see, that's really not long and like the, that picture shows, right? There's actually a fence that runs right through there, so it's just it's really not not as long and deep as as the map shows, but it is kind of like a cul-de-sac in there. Oh, okay. You see that? It's kind of a gap there, a gap here. I'm going to show you a close-up picture. Um, I actually flew the drone, spotting, looking for cows in here, and actually spot some cows here and over here. Then there were some more down in here, um, where the bulldozers actually went in to um, clear path and things like that. So. Um, this is this is that yesterday. All it's right. beautiful over there, I'll tell you. So there's, so there's a bulldozer. They, they got back in there. Here's here's how the roads are. Bad. I'm just looking for my This is it right here. Wow. <laughs> so this is the lava field. All right. Um, the snakehead, if you will. And there's a, there's a gap in between over there. Now, this is stacked up, guys, up, up to top. That's about 50 feet of rock huh. stacked up high. I mean, these some of these trees, these Obesia trees are 100 feet tall. These like this. So you can see that in comparison. Uh, these are trees that have been swallowed up by lava. All of this was, was cows in here. This whole area was, was, you know, where a lot of cows were. Um, and so we're just kind of going in there and surveying it, the, the, um, the devastation and see if I can spot any areas where there are cows. It, it looks like it has cooled down. Yeah, it does look like that, but you can still see that there's areas that is, oh, trust me, it's very hot. It's, it is very hot. I was worried about melting my drone, actually. Um, oh, you see okay. smoke in there? It's hot. It is, it's cooling down, um, but it is, it is hot. I think this is a, for some reason, it's cut a clip of me flying back um, from surveying these, looking at these cows, because we're down in here, right there, in, inside of this little mouth of the snake, right, the snake head. Yep. If, I, if I pause this, we're looking at the snake head. This is the, the top part of the head up here. This is, and down here is the mouth, and, and a little further down is where I was showing you on the map. Um, 
So this is Jason's community. This his friend Pete, and um, this is the house we were actually flying to John from. And Jason's house is just a little further around um, the corner around here, right? And so this is li living dangerously. <laughs> well, I mean, this we went out there. We went out there thrill seeking. That's what I'm. I'm I don't want people to be misled. There was an actual purpose. We were out there to get footage, to document this, to see the progression. And and um, there's all these people who live in in this area that are concerned about their farm, about um, their animals. There's animals, thousands of animals still all in there. And uh, they have no idea. I just have to say, I think prayer can, can distort this or like take it away. Yeah. I can say I pray for you, brother. Every every uh, sermon service that we do, every time I eat, every time I go to sleep or I wake up, you are always you and Darlene, the family are always in my prayers. The people from Hawaii, yeah. y'all are in my prayers. We appreciate that, brother. All right, so the, like these trees here, these taller trees, these are bezas. They're very very tall, so I have to fly about two hundred feet um, in the air. Well, just kind of fast forward it a little bit. This is smoke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just kind of surveying. So, Jonathan, if if this was to stop and kind of neutralize out um, with all that lava field around their houses and their farms, what can they ever do anything on that? Um, you can build on top of it. Uh, there is a program where the state swaps land, anything that was uh, destroyed. Um, I would not like to be there calling upon a false Elohim. Yeah. No. No kidding, right? Mm. It's amazing. I'll tell you what, that drone takes pretty good footage, brother. It does. It does, yeah. All right, so this is actually flying over to the place where I, I believe these, uh, I'm, I'm fast forward. I believe where um, I know where the cows are. And you can see in the foreground that choke point because this is the area where it goes over down the little cul-de-sac, right? And I see cows laying there. One standing there, there's one laying, another white one laying, there's a black one laying, a black one, black one. So there's a few cows there. And actually there was more when I actually walked up on them. There were more here. And uh, we had a problem because once you approach them, they go deeper. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Into there. Yeah. All right, all right. You can clearly see. Clearly see that is an animal laying right there. Oh, yeah. And, and lava stacked up on, on both sides of her. Um, and it's more than one. There's dozens. And down they're downhill. Look, this breaks downhill, guys. Down. Are they, and, um, are, are they alive? Huh? Are they alive? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the saga continues. Um, they are still alive. Miraculously. This is insane how miraculous this is. All right. So now I know exactly where these, these are. I've been flying around using up my batteries to find these cows. The, the farmer, the rancher, is actually in with two more bulldozers. He's already lost one huge one. He brought two more in to come in and say, with active lava flow, approaching, uh-uh, closing in. Civil defense is warning him he's got less than a day, it's gonna close off. Anybody, anything in here in this trees where the helicopters cannot land will be cut off and that's it. You are in trouble, you're, you're done, right? Because you can't just climb over this. You don't just walk out of this, guys. This is like a thousand degrees or more. <laughs> 
because this is cooling lava. This is not the 3,000 degree stuff that's up here on top flowing. This is the cooling uh uh. And it's like very dry brick pottery, hot, 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 hot. All right, so this cow's just chilling in there, right? And so, um, So this is us trekking in there through the bulldozer um, through that side. So we've gone um, around the fingers, and there's also, I didn't tell you about the big crack. There's a huge gaping crack where Darla was with the third phase of moon filming that advance. And we went to the other side and actually went through the gap that you saw where those cows were and actually was down in there trying to get them to come back out and force them back out of that cul-de-sac, right? So like you, you see this, right, it was d very dense. There's no way you could have gone through this, like just, you know, I'm gonna go get these cows, impossible. This, this whole area was so overgrown. It was a triple canopy jungle. So he's literally cutting new paths in there, opening opening up, pushing down trees so we can expose the cattle and get them into the opening. Um, right. And so, you know, this was pretty interesting footage I took. This is some chickens. This is on the other side where Darley is. <laughs> Um, you know, life's still going on over here. There's still animals everywhere. So we walk up on, uh, Darla and them over on the other side where this, which is this advancing bulldozers also been over here clearing, clearing out. You can see, you can see that. that's a very good shot. It's very hot. I mean, it's, it's still glowing in some parts. And actually all of this, before I could get back from the other side where I was in the gap, all of this had advanced forward. And you couldn't, where I'm standing, it was 20 feet under lava about an hour later, right? And so here's the huge crack in the ground. It starts right here and it goes uh, lengthwise between me and that lava for probably a quarter mile. All right. So here's me walking up on these cows <laughs> deep, deep inside of uh, where they was hanging out. Somebody is typing, oh wait, who is that? Not me. Sorry, I think that's me. All right, so I don't know how good you, can, you guys can see there, but there's cattle in the in the woods right there. It's brown cows standing all through all here. Now, I was trying not to spook them and drive them even further because we wanted to get behind them and push them back out. Civil defense and firefighters were above us. The bulldozer is down where I'm pointing. He's trying to go back around because we're 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 in an extreme danger area, guys. Because it's like closing in like this. So he's trying to go around these cows. 
Did you have contact with him? Oh yeah, did we had spotters? Um, we were communicating with hand signals, mm -hmm. scouts, things like that. I had a drone with me where I could send it up and see exactly. I didn't have it at this time, but it was with Darla. But uh, I, once I found where these cows was, I had to, you know, scurry on foot basically because you can't drive your truck in here. Even behind where they were, where they were knocking down trees, it's still you to tear the bottom out of your car. So there's, there's a cow right there. See the head moved. And the reason why I'm not getting close is I don't want to spook them. And there are a couple of bulls in here with longhorns, like bulls. Yikes. <laughs> like there's a bull standing right there looking at me like, I'm already having a bad day, guy. What do you want to do? I'm like, Wow. Yeah. So I don't want to make the bull bulls mad. There's some cows looking at me right there. As you see the cows, it's like three or four cows standing really close together, all oh, yeah. looking at me. I see one space. Yeah. There's also a white one in there right there. So I'm sure there's going to be people that say, oh, there's no cows. I didn't see any cows. But trust me, guys, there, there are cows there. Um. And here's me going further. This is, this is the fence line that I showed you. So, so this is the fence line that cuts across the pocket that we're in. And uh, I'm shooting down here with Jason. He's running ahead of me. You can see where the bulldozer is going in and he's, he's gonna circle around and get behind these cows and push them. Not push them with, the, with them bulldozer using the bulldozer and at the sounds of it it drives them out right and just fast forward just very man this stuff right was up to your neck in brush and and it was like you see the undulating going up very physical this is why i was so exhausted so i finally caught up to wood one of the bulldozers there where he's coming in behind i already know where the cows are and uh Jason's talking to him. I don't go in. I don't show this guy's face um, because he was, you know, people were making threats about um, about this guy. Here comes the second bulldozer, which is a bigger one. A smaller one went in first and kind of knocked down a bunch of trees, and then a bigger one just kind of comes in and. Yeah, I'll bless you for putting your lives on the line to save them, man. Yeah, we volunteered. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, the, the fire department was called in to go and help and all that kind of stuff. So these cows are over in this area. And I'm probably, I, I didn't want to walk up on them for the sake of getting a shot for someone to see a cow and spook them and completely counter, be counterproductive to what we were doing. We knew where they were. We could see them. They were resting and trying to you know not overheat you see that lava uh this is lava see it right there so we're at the, we're at the edge in the cul-de-sac coming in com making sure there's nothing in between us and the lava so nobody's going to get no no nobody's going to get left behind and start driving them back a rescue mission that's rescue amazing mission, completely yeah and then we have you know y'all was was with us and helping us man because um that flow you know i just was talking about this map here that flow was just right above us. 
this heavy flow. So here you saw the fence line in there. So we're down in this area working right here. And this right here, though it looks like it's a long way, as you saw in the picture with the cows, is feet, right? So this, this, these could have closed up very quickly and left us in here doomed. Um, but we were able to get in there and get behind them cows and then, you know, start getting them out. And so um, the rest of the story, as it were, is he is still working today. Those, those Hawaiians that own this, these animals are in there today still with bulldozers getting them to a loading area that they've made with, with uh, those tractors. They've actually cut a new road from Nanavali. This is a Nanavali neighborhood here. This road that comes up, one of those bulldozers came in this way, cutting a road for them to escape and to get the cattle trailers in and, and loaded. And the other came in basically on a trailer the way we did through the jungle and the smaller one. So today, Animals are being rounded up with teams of cowboys <clears throat> actually going around and, and rounding them up like they do and getting them on the trailers. So, you know, this serpent snake head kind of thing that came to Jason's land has slowed down to uh-uh. Faster stuff is, is still on this side <clears throat> and is relentless, guys, and the amount of lava that's coming out. I think they said 100 to 150 um, metric tons, or uh, how do they measure that? Square meters? Anyway, it's a very, it's an extreme number. Uh, the USGS, when he was talking about it, he was just flabbergasted at the amount that was coming out of Fisher 8, so it's a lot. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I my mom's gonna freak out when she sees that but um you know it wasn't in there like we were thrill seeking it was in a, an actual mission there was um you know animals everywhere man i got you know look at this um little family of sheep we found I mean. <laughs> those, those are babies from this year so they were new babies and mamas I mean brother I think I definitely know you get a blessing for helping the animals. Yes, definitely. I don't see. I, I can't. I, I don't. I don't understand how you are just so relaxed, brother. Like I, I serve the Most High of the Universe, brother. And we were through there. This, I believe personally, it's just me. You know, I, I want to show you on the but what Jason's been doing with uh, pictures of his house, man. Um, he's put it, put a circle around it. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> we went in there praying that Yahuwah would spare and started calling upon a name. When Jason, when this first started and he was evacuated and he came and stayed at my house, we pray in the name. Yes. I said, brother, we need to just go back and put the name everywhere. Yes. On your, on your property. I thought I had a picture of his, uh, I posted so much stuff. Because I'm following all this, you know, the volcano stuff happening around the world. Oh, for sure. And there's a lot. It's 33 volcanoes that are currently uh, erupting simultaneously. <clears throat> you say 33? 33 of them that are actively flowing. Like the one Fuego in Guatemala right now. Um, it's uh, pretty bad, man. There's 
I was looking at, there were people that were doing like the Hawaiians taking pictures when it all happened, except with this one, it, there was a, a pyroplastic flow that killed probably thousands of people, man. Um, they're, they're saying like 60, 80 people dead. Mark my words, man, there's, there's going to be thousands. Some of the pictures that are coming back were those same people in the pictures before standing on the bridge taking photographs are under pyroplastic flow now, dead on the, on the same bridge. It is so sad because a lot of them were, were children. Um, hold on, let me... Uh, it's the birth pains. Exactly. And that's uh, that was something I was going to try to talk about yesterday on... Uh, Now you see TV, and uh, I, I literally hit the ground running. Um, yeah, it's just traumatizing. You know, sitting here thinking about it. Let me uh, share this. Um, um, Dutch Sense had put out the warning about Guatemala before it hit. He had ta he talked about an earthquake, and he said there's there's pressure building and you've got either the volcano that could erupt or a larger earthquake that could go off. And he said it could be one or the other. And it was the volcano that went off. Yeah. So this is Jason's house right there, his little farm and his community that he lives in has <clears throat> taken some, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but, but what I was just showing you where those cows are is here's that fence line that runs through there was in this area right here. Now this is this is lava that's sitting up on a, a bed of uh, uh, probably 50 feet above our heads, right? And uh, this this slower stuff. There is still molten rock under this. As you can see, it's spilling out and going down into the crack. This is a crack. It's in the ground there. It was probably there a couple hundred years. It's about 70 feet deep in some places. So the thing is, we were praying that you would spare his house. And look what's happening. It's the flow that is happening is going in the crack. So that's a good thing. That's actually helping him. But Darla was filming in this area right here. I went all the way around the crack. And after we've spotted the cows with the drone, got in this area, got in behind them and started running them out because this was closing off guys. Even now, this is a photograph from this morning and you can see it's almost closed off completely. Um, in there wow so the, that rancher worked and stayed in there overnight with his family three generations his father his him and his son um and, and a female i think it's one of the younger guy's daughter i mean a wife all hawaiians his sister. Is a sister yeah okay my bad i'm his sister hawaiian family been on the island a long time more than most people, right? So they belong here. <clears throat> Still there. Now we're going to try to go back after class today and um, and assist in what we can, get some more footage and document, because there are people that are upset with me personally. Like I, I'm, a, I'm ex responsible for this and stuff. So I feel very compelled to, to see this kind of thing through. Um, it even motivated me to, to kind of go in and spot and help this guy. My wife went documenting. So it's a big story. Um, the other thing is Fuego. You know, I'm following that. That's just, man, it's horrendous. There's been no casualties, luckily. I take that back. The human casualties in this have been people have lost their homes. But um, here in the past few days, there have been a, two suicides from someone. And I, I don't know if they were a couple or what the deal was, or if it's a, a, two separate incidences, but uh, we, we got word yesterday there was, there was actually two suicides since this happened, um, and countless numbers of animals that have died. Um, it's traumatic, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's distress, uh, the groaning, the travail of the earth, and everyone's focused in on Hawaii, right, like the micro. But if you look at the macro, 33 volcanoes going off all around the world. That's exactly what scripture said would happen, man. It's just, 
You can see that. I, I believe it's got to be prophetic. Yeah, I believe it's something pulling on our planet from the outside force. Sort of like if you take a very strong magnet and iron ferrite or something, and you kind of move it around, you can you can manipulate that to pull and to you know to do things. Sort of like our Earth is doing. Countless numbers of uh, photographs and film I've been seeing of, of crevasses opening up. Some some cases overnight. Uh, one of the latest ones I've seen was in Colorado, approximately two kilometers long, that opened up overnight. Right. Bio but we do have a giant magnet in the Earth right now. CERN fired back up back in March. Oh, great. Here's something interesting. My gimbal, um, since all this has been started, and especially when I was in and around all this lava yesterday, it has a, a frequency interference that's been happening in this. It's really strange. It's not constantly. It's like you walk in these zones, and, and, and it's all of a sudden it goes, Wah! it wants to turn and do things by itself. It's so aggravating because I can't get a, a clear, smooth shot without that thing doing something. Um, <laughs> But I think it's frequencies or something going on in this lava. Um, people even talk about it before all the eruption, that lava flowing underneath your feet, like in Pohiki, 26 foot underground. That's why they have warm ponds down there. That the flowing of that stuff causes frequencies and causes a vibe in the air. But they, uh, that's a good thing, I think they call it. Um, a good vibe. Well, well frequency. Uh, Earthquakes can cause what they call a paleoetic electrical reaction, and some people have actually seen uh, caught flashes of, of light on uh, uh, fault zones before major earthquakes have happened, like in Fukushima, right. some of them. And the there's, a, there's an electrical reaction going on with this. Now, it's not just a physical heating of, of the magma. There's actually electrical things going on here. All lightning. I heard him saying ball lightning in uh, some of the footage they caught of the lava flowing, and it was actually balls of lightning. People were catching it on film and say, look at the orbs. Um, yes. So this, the, 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 the crystals that are in the geological structure moving around could be causing free, free radio, uh, radio waves and, and electrical interference. It's just a little thought. Who do we know that's resembled as lightning that's turned to the earth? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the gimbal I'm talking about is a very good gimbal. It's a failure tech gimbal. And um, it's virtually unused. I only started using it here. I bought it in Utah, but I only started using it here. And, uh, yeah, radio frequencies, interference with it in the lava. So that's uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, to to discover that, um, I'm looking at Mauna Loa and the Bible codes right now, man. Very interesting that uh, you would say that, Chris, because I was just telling Darla, um, and had planned on sharing with Now You See TV that um, in the beginning of this, when we first come here, it was impressed on my heart, and and you know I've been kind of going back and forth with the Holy Spirit about it you know, trying to get confirmation that this was from Yehua because I can't put something out unless I know for sure. I'm not going to ruin my credibility, right? Just being flippant with information. <laughs> let, let, let me, let me show you what, what I have so far. And now here's another confirmation. Um, that I, I believe we're going to see Mauna Loa. This, the, the Kilauea thing is just the beginning guys. Um, Mauna Loa is going to wake up. The, sleep, the word I got from the Holy Spirit is the sleeping giant will awake. What? Lamed, Lamed, Mam, Aleph, Wav, Nun, Mona, Mona, uh, hey, Ma, Mona, and then Lamed, Wav, Aleph, hey, Loa, Mon, two, two La, Mauna Loa, or before Mauna Loa. Before Mauna Loa. And you have down here, Lamed, I N noon, hey, wormwood, right here, and then you have star right here. You have star again, calf, wav, calf, bet, star or planet, and then here's your name right here, <laughs> Jonathan the scribe, right here, yeah. and you have 
Resh, Aleph, Aleph, Tet, My Jonathan last name. Wright. And again, you have Wormwood here. And on the top, you have uh, Hey, Resh, Ayan, Shin. That's the earthquake. And then down below at the very bottom, sharing the Ayan with uh, Wormwood, you have Volcano. Look at that. And this scripture is actually... <laughs> My, both spellings of my name is in this, in the plain text. Yeah. Look at that. Um, is any of that, I, it's not an abacus effect, is it? Probably. Uh, this one is in the plain text. This one could very well be. Abacus? No, it, it's actually in Chronicles. Okay. Still impressive. That's still impressive. But the, the, the scripture here tells us that it's, this is, a judgment Psalm. against the proud and the lofty. Let, let, oh my gosh. Uh, Psalm 119, uh, 78, 79, and 80. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. precepts. Yeah, and the word code is in there. We know what that word prakuti is, guys, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's codes is, is hidden in there. Yeah, the word, this word here is from Psalm 119.78. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies, let my heart be sound in thy statutes, and not that I be not ashamed. Hallelujah. And the word star is quoted right in here in verse 79 and 80. Now, the reason why star is in there, guys, is because I was happy in Utah where we were, right? I needed to be convinced that we had to come to Hawaii. I, you know, it was a great place to visit, but I didn't want to necessarily move here. And so I told Darla, you always got to convince me, Darla, before I'm going to go. Well, he did. And um, actually convinced me that the, one of the reasons why we're coming, because there's many reasons, is um, Wormwood, Nibiru. Because of the proximity of where we are in the middle of the ocean and the Mauna Kea over there, that we would be the witness that he said I would be at 12 years old, that he would bring me to a place that I would witness this. Now we did, I did find encoded in my own code that it is because of this, a warning from the broadcast is what it says in my code there. They are warned because of the broadcast that never made sense until all of this started manifesting. Now you understand what I'm saying? So he brought us here for one, to teach the name, to make contact with lost tribes, but also be a witness, I believe, to what is going on, the volcano, and I believe ultimately the, the, the instigator of it all, which is you who is using his creation, right, for this. So Nibiru, as they will call it, Wormwood, as it is written in the Bible, will have an interaction with our planet, guys, and do things. Isaiah 24. What caused is Isaiah 24? It's not just, you know, all of a sudden one day you have flips on a switch and this event happens. It is physical things are taking place in, in the realm of our reality. Things happen in laws of physics, right? So you have interactions causing effect of planetary bodies. Something coming into our solar system will cause effects on the planet. Correct? And we're, right? We are safe to assume this. We have observed it in other cases. It's safe to put two and two together and say, it's plausible. This will happen. So I submit that all these volcanoes we've seen, 33 of them at one time, earth cracking, opening up, is, is an outside, out, outside cause. I'm now... PGV and all that kind of stuff, I, I'm sure, is a factor in all of this. Can't be a good thing. They're pumping pressurized gas in these chambers. But like I said, on the bigger picture, looking at it on the macro scale, uh, this is happening all across our planet. So taking it back to the scriptures and even what the codes say, it's there. So I'm so, so thankful, Chris, that you guys are, are you know thinking about Hawaii and doing codes on Hawaii. Even I'm not able to do that as well while I'm on the ground doing what we're doing. It's, it's, yeah, I, got, I got one code I found with one 
set of verses under it, and I haven't worked it, but uh, it's it's related. Yeah, yeah the thing's pretty fluid uh, where you're yeah. going. I got What's it in front of me. I just haven't been able to work it. We've just been so busy. What's up, Sister um, Paula? Uh, Chris, um, I had to step away for a minute. What is your access term? Uh, two Mauna Loa. Mm. Uh, but the Lamed could be either two or before or unto, something like that. Okay, thank you. Um, you're welcome, sister. You also have in here, Rash Aleph Yod Tav Yod. That's the word I seen or I saw. And then over here, um, Ayan Yod Nun Yod Wav. That's the word eyes of him. And you can see and hear that he's and brother. Brother John is is watching. <laughs> but up here, uh, this is interesting. The the word uh, hey, mam pay tav hat. That's the word portal or door or opening. And this here is he is opening. He is opening mono mono loa. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, you have you have a connection here between what you're doing there and the influence uh, that this this uh, interstellar body has on our planet. Yeah, I think right. he wants uh, the world to see the, the calling upon his name, that his word is true. And we did that over Jason's. And you see that it's literally it's not gone on to his property. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to. Maybe who has given us time to getting – things out of there but calling on his name for one is has been a big thing um, in this and while, while you guys were talking about all the different um, volcanoes that are active right now um, a verse that came to my mind is from Isaiah 5 and if I could just read it quick um, I don't know if this is what's going on but um, Isaiah 5 verse 14 says, uh, therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Mm. And it goes on and on about judgment. And then, um, then in verse 20, it says that verse that we've all heard before, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Oh, that is a warning there. So that just seems like, you know, I don't know if hell is in the bowels of the earth. I don't know. I, I lean that way, but I know other people believe other things. Yeah. But if, if that's what's going on, you know, the, all that coming out of the earth, making room. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I heard a woman who was was um, a Christian she was like telling that when volcanoes uh, 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 occurred um, that hell was enlarging itself I don't know if it's true but I heard her say that so actually there's there's some evidence to to agree with that because if you listen to Dutch sense and what he's been talking about about the Pacific plate it literally covers almost half the earth and that that has been displaced somehow and it's putting pressure on the underside of the plates this is what's causing your movement so yeah it's it's actually the earth is literally enlarging itself and he's also done some work uh exposing th that the core of the earth is actually made, made out of plasma and not a solid iron core too and that that's uh he himself uh said that's hot hot enough to melt the uh, elements that it's, it's actually hotter in, in the inside of the core of our earth than it is on the surface of the sun. And uh, Who is this, Chris? Uh, Chris? The, the Dutch sense. The, the earthquake guy who okay. does it, earthquake predictions uh, like up to seven days in advance. And yeah, he's on YouTube. 90, yeah, okay. oh, he's, he's right about 80, 90% of the time. But the plasma thing is, is actually... You know, very reliable. You know why he's 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 good because he's good at at observing patterns and seeing mm -hmm. trends over the long term, and that's how he's able to you know to know he's following it very closely. 
it really gets under the skin of the USGS. And I get that because um, I can see this kind of same kind of correlation with some of the things that we're doing. And, and the, the rat was like, how did he do that? Right. <laughs> anyway, um, he's very accurate at his, at what he does. And um, I've been listening and kind of following and, and Chris is right. He called the Guatemala thing. And um, yeah, um, I personally think it may, it may have something to do with hell and large in itself. But I mean, wow. Um, it's all connected to the Bible guys. I know some people think that is, that is wacky. Uh, why would you even think like that? But I can show you like woman in travail. I looked that up. It just was on my mind. You know, just all the, the groaning sounds I'm hearing from the videos all around the world. People are recording sounds exactly one month before the earthquake happens. The big ones happen in Hawaii. April 3rd, a guy in Pahala records trumpet sounds. And then um, earthquakes are even continuing today in that very same area. So woman in travail is, is the access term. Hawaii is here uh, uh, several times in, in smaller skips. So I, I kept all of the, the smaller skips and then just kind of went and looked at what, you know, those verses were. But I want to take a look at the actual place that the um, the access term is sitting on, which is right there. This is Jeremiah, around the eighth chapter, and uh, I'm going to start there. Just kind of look at what's going on. Remember, in in all of this, we've been seeing a lot of judgment and purging and cleansing of the earth, right? That kind of thing. So, I'm going to back it up. How do you say who or what? Maybe we should just read the whole thing in context. And at that time, saith Yahuwah, they shall bring out the bones of king of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. Now, of course, there's a context of you know, ancient history of when this actually happened. But in the context of this code that we're looking at, who has put this scripture under woman in travail and in all of the terms we will define in this, right, for another context. So we're looking at this encoded, right, not in the context of, of the plain text. And they, shall, and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped, and they shall not be gathered, nor be buried. They shall be dung upon the faces of the earth. Excuse me, face of the earth. And death shall be closer rather than life, by all residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, saith Yehoah Zavah. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Yehoah, Shall they fall and not rise? Shall they turn away and not return? I hearkened and heard, but they spoke not aright, nor man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his, own, to his course, as a horse rush into battle. Yea, the stork in heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle, and the crane, and the swallow observed, the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of Yahuwah. Woman in travail, guys. The earth is in travail, and the people got no clue. All of the animals know, but the people are ignorant. Yep. How do we say we are wise and the law of Yahuwah is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made it he. The pen of scribes is vain. The wise men are shamed, and they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of Yahuwah. And what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives to others, and their fields to them thou shalt inherit them. 
for everyone from under the last even to the greatest is given to covetousness from the prophet even to the priest everyone dealeth falsest falsely and you see that today in the mega churches right there is no righteousness going on in, in the leadership Amen. for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace where were uh, where there were shame when they had committed abomination no they were not all ashamed neither could they blush therefore they shall fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation they shall be cast down saith yahuwah and i will surely consume them saith yahuwah but there shall be no grapes on the vine nor figs of the tree and the leaf shall fade and all things that i have given shall pass away before them this is lava running right through the bread and fruit basket of this island right all of the the vineyards and, and orchards down there why do we sit still assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there for yahuwah our elohim hath put us to silent and given us what wormwood to drink just like it says in uh, chris's table and other places because we have sinned against yahuwah we look for peace but no good came and for time of health behold trouble guys and like i said i haven't really got to work this much just got into it but the very first lines that i read with woman in travail connection to hawaii and the rest of the world i bet you guatemala's in here i bet you can find all the volcanoes that are going on but you know initially it's the same story you know the world is in travail because of judgment now what does it say here in psalm 55 that i got highlighted i don't remember let's just see what that says something about the name i'm sure Cast thy burden upon Yahuwah, and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Hallelujah. And I think I was thinking about <laughs> Jason's house, right? And we call upon Yahuwah. But thou art, O Yahuwah, shall, shall bring them down into the pit of their destruction, of of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days but i will trust in thee i always find something really compelling and that's that's always a good definition of the power of prayer you see this big wall of lava coming towards your house and you're praying, <laughs> please stop. And it stops. <laughs> Hallelujah. I Good remember picture. one time in, in Louisiana, man, there was a, a tornado that was ripping through some cornfields coming right to our house. And uh, I saw it on radar. The warning came on the radio, like a split 10 seconds before we could he feel and hear the storm. And I just went on the back porch Raised my, I didn't even know the name at that time. And I, and I said, stop in the name of Jesus. I was calling on Jesus, right? But my faith was so strong and believing in, 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 in my Messiah. Folks, that storm, it, it, it was done at that point. It ripped through all the farms and stuff where it was. But by the time it got to us, it had dissipated and gone. Now, you know, was it just over or what did, did something actually happen? It strengthened my faith to know that I could call upon my Messiah and he responds. Now, years later, coming into the knowledge of actually has a real name. Imagine when you start walking in that truth, right? And in that faith. And we did that out there. When this whole thing started, I, I encouraged Jason. I said, man, let's claim the name. Let's claim the name on your, on your house and on your 
property and just, and one thing I noticed in the pictures is everywhere that we went is still there. <laughs> and that is amazing to me. Everywhere that we went praying and riding around in my car, in his car, the days that we were out there, it's still there. And that is just, I think, a testimony to the, to the awesomeness to, of our father. Um, he's got a wife that is Jewish. She was raised Jewish. And uh, she's all new to this Christian thing, especially the, the Christian Torah mixed messianic thing. She's like blown away by that. She was like, what? Right? Dana is, is, grew up Jewish. And her husband is messianic uh, Torah keeper. And uh, she's, she's in shock. She has been traumatized uh, by this guy's, um, their whole, their whole life is there. They, they put everything there and um, it's a test of her faith. And so um, one of my prayers is that you would do something amazing to strengthen her, her faith and her um, walk with him in this. Um, so I didn't mean to turn this whole class into a, Hawaii thing, guys. I apologize for that. If, if there's anybody that has anything you want to add or, or, you know, they want to bring up or take us in another direction, we can do that. You guys got any codes or working on any modules you, you, you want to talk about something? We can transition into that now. I'm on module seven working on my words, brother. <laughs> awesome. You're right there. You're almost getting that first program. That's really Amen. mean. I appreciate you being persistent and keep sticking with it, brother. This whole thing is supposed to be laid out like a rite of passage um, kind of thing. We're not just going to enable you to to search codes without you know getting some Hebrew, get some scripture under your belt, and that kind of thing because it develops a more mature, disciplined code searcher if you do that. And I appreciate Michael that you're that you're taking the time. Each one of you guys, Harold, or Gerald, um, you know Connie. All of you guys, Inga, that are just sticking with it, all the time that's been put into to writing those lessons, it has a purpose. And uh, we appreciate you guys going through it uh, and, and you know, getting to the point where we can actually search codes together. Um, that's, that's the ultimate goal is uh, being proficient in that. Oh, brother, I enjoy it. I mean, you guys did a wonderful job, both of you, on, you know, creating the tests and you know the whole thing that, i'm taking my time on it because i want to make sure that i absolutely you know that i get it i'll i'll do one of the codes and then i'll go to the hebrew and then i'll come back to one of the codes oh, and alternate. but you guys did a phenomenal job you know especially coming from the hebrew class to the code searching you guys did a phenomenal job on the, the, the well the i have to let that credit goes to to my wife and uh, of course you who are that's inspired her because I've watched the process with her and um, it's quite a sight. She, she worked really hard and uh, it was you who are leading her many hours to, to put that together. Um, yeah. Me, me and Rick really kind of assisted <laughs> in uh, this process. It shows, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm really enjoying it. And it, it shows you guys put a lot of time in it, researched it and, and you know, that's, I would I would recommend it to any one of my friends that are you know interested in code searching. As a matter of fact, a brother of mine, Levi, did ask me about it. I told him, I said, brother, if you're really into it, contact Jonathan because I'm telling you, this is one of the. I went through a lot of courses, and this is one of the best courses that I have ever went through. I appreciate that, brother. And if anybody wants to go to thecodesearcher.com forward slash apply, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you on the phone. I mean. No. And who knows if somehow, you know, Yahuwah works in marvelous ways, but somehow with you being there, I'm sure you've thought about this, Jonathan, but, you know, the codes, people don't know about them. Oh, I <laughs> they, know. They I just know. don't know. And here you are in the thick of this and, uh, you know, with the class coming up with lots of great codes and they're still not really being seen by people yet right so who knows if this is going to somehow open a door for that i pray it does i pray it revitalizes and opens up that field again because initially it was brought into the scene by an atheist that you you, you will work with what he has at the time guys right so michael drawson comes up with this 
you know, code that predicts the death of a, of a prime minister and it happens and people go crazy over that. And that started the predictive element of this field for people. That's, you know, that's what they were drawn to. We can know the future. You and I all know that the future is contained here, but it's not as easy as just walking up to the code program and just extracting what you want. Hmm. Today, I want to know the lottery numbers, right? You who are, the loving and wise father he is did not give us and hand us over a crystal ball, right? But he did <laughs> enable us to know what he means. And I believe the purpose of it is to reconcile his word, to, to guide us back in, to, to calibrate us, if you will, because of all the perversion of man throughout time. So, and we're seeing that. And uh, I'm hoping this revitalization, this, you know, people coming and talking, contact with codes again because I hear it over and over. Oh, I heard about the codes. Michael draws and yeah, and they, and they got the book, right? But that's as far as they went with it in the 1990s because of, you know, who was really leading them? Michael draws and was like the aliens wrote it. And, you know, you're supposed to find out and change the future and save the world, right? That's the, that's the purpose of book three. Here we are. We are on the front representatives of you. And I believe he's going to do something new um, with these students, by the way, um, that, that's going to change that. And, and so I'm looking forward to that. And I think it may be in a new phase that we move into looking into the Peshitta. Because um, as you may know, a lot of Christians think the Old Testament means like old and done away with. Right. So they're really concerned about Peshitta. So uh, we haven't searched that much. And it's open territory. I'm excited about that. And I think that may be the place where things kind of tip for the believer and, and actually putting it back out in the mainstream is, again. Um, it's been suppressed. A lot of false information, as you may know. A couple of people wrote very bad papers, uninformed, made up stuff. You know, McKay just did some, a lot of damage with the papers that he wrote basically forging and cutting and pasting in codes in Moby Dick and saying, see, you can find them in Moby Dick. Um, anyway, we're overcoming all of that. It is a new time for code searchers. Well, I can tell you that I definitely, I mention it all the time in my sermons, in my services that I have online. Um, I, you know, I, I tell everybody how <laughs> it's funny because the ministry is built on the rest restoration of his name and how my walk with him led me straight to you, Jonathan. Like, you know, it was, it was, it was Godsidence. It wasn't a coincidence. It was Godsidence wow. that, you know, that, that it led me straight to you. It gave me a deeper understanding into the scriptures of the Bible. It revealed his name and, you know, it just, it was, it was a godsend. You know, so I, I constantly mention it in in my sermons and my service, and you know, because people ask me, well, "What's this code searcher?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know." I said a lot of people say it's revolved around Kabbalah and divination. I said, but you know, it's not. I said when the Father grabs a hold of you and he shakes you and says, "Look, pay attention," you know, yeah. and you follow him. I said it gives you. It's like a story that plays out. You know right in front of you it's not like reading the bible in english terms right. you know and and understanding i said when you understand it from the hebrew perspective and you get into the codes you know it's it's kind of like a story that comes to life right in front of you you yeah. understand a deeper meaning of the scriptures that were written two thousand years ago i said it's just it's something that you would have to be one want to be serious with first of all you know, and, and spend a lot of time with your with your creator, your father. I said, but when you do that, the scriptures will open up to you in a way that you never thought that they would. The love that you will feel from Elohim is immense. And, and I've had a lot of people like, you know, curious about me and ask me. And I, I keep telling them, look, codesearcher.com. Go speak to Brother Jonathan. I think that is uh that's been true for me as well that uh the codes have been like a conduit a, a connection point very similar to the ephod i might add guys like right? with the high priest and Yahuwah. it was a point of connection it was a communication point where he reveals deeper things and the scripture says that 
He's searching. His eyes are searching, looking for those, for that heart that wants to search for him. Right? So yeah. He's putting nuggets here and there for those to find. Why? Because it's a connection point. When you find them and you've got that connection point and it's a revelation meant for you, what does it do to your faith? It strengthens you, right? And I believe the loving father enables us that way. And we just didn't weren't turned loose into the wilderness and said, go find your way. <clears throat> he, he gave us tools and things and, and checkpoints in our life that we, we cling to and, and move from the next point to the next point, right? And I believe this tool he's given us takes her to a deeper level because what was on the surface had to be given to us cryptically. People say, well, why is the Bible so hard to understand? Why the prophets, why did Jesus talk like that? Even his own disciples, Yeshua, why are you talking in parables all the time? Why don't you speak plainly <laughs> to the people? And what did he say? It's not for everybody. There's some here that this is not for. And then he said, I thank you, Father, that you hid this from the what? Wise and the prudent. In today's term, I thank you, Father, that you hid this from the theologians and the ones with the PhDs and, you know, Amen. the high and mighty ones that talk down to everybody. But you gave it to the babies and you revealed yourself to them. Now, the book smart ones may have book smarts. And I'm not going to disrespect and say there's no, you know, value in theological education. But when it takes you to the point where your head is so swollen um, that you deny that Yahuwah is, is even capable of encoding the scriptures, right? You pass it off on something else, completely discount it. That is not, to me, the mark of a, of a academic. I mean, if you're concerned about truth and academia, you know, follow through. At least search it out yourself and you know, not be parrot and say oh it's a bunch of hogwash you know there's no due diligence in that what i have found personally when i was a skeptic is man if people got a hold of this it would change their life but, but, but for the most part it's just passed by <laughs> you know people are like i don't want to know i don't want to know <laughs> i don't want to know right i kid you not Darla and I came in contact with someone in this whole thing. We tried to share some stuff about the name, and he stopped us. He said, I don't want to know because I'm telling you the truth. He said, I don't want to be accountable. Wow. Darla, did he not tell us that? He said, I don't want to be accountable. And I'm thinking, oh, my but you are accountable. <laughs> you can't just put your head in the sand when you know the truth. You got to walk in it, guys. If you put your head in the sand, I don't, 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 don't want to know. <laughs> that is not going to fly on the day that it matters, man. You got to walk it, right? And so, you got to live it and love it. We didn't, we don't, we don't hammer him. We love the guy. He's being very traumatized right now. He's one of the ones in Leilani that hasn't lost his house yet. And um, we were sharing with him. We, we he invited us to stay with him. He was our host at the time. We got photos and stuff, but we were sharing, right? As we do. And uh, he put the brakes on it. And so we, we would be more subtle and, and just be examples. But we, we, we talked about faith a lot. I think he even uh, slowed down the cussing a little bit once we got into talking about Yahuwah. But he, he did tell us, he was like, I don't want to be accountable, guys. And I just thought to myself, oh, my, but you are accountable already. <laughs> so, yeah, there are those people that just don't want to know. Man. He they... was also having a very tough time with, um, with just the – the sounds of the volcano and that he's there sleeping and it wakes him up at night and he feels everything even when there's nothing to feel he feels things like he's hypersensitive 
sensitive right. and um, he's feeling things that aren't even there. But he said that he would come and uh, we told him we would get him a sefer, um, which is a pretty expensive translation. But um, we told him we'd get him one. We've got to order one for ourselves. We gave ours away. So uh, he said he would come and we could show him what to study. And he would study it. And I did have Holy Scriptures with me. So I gave him that and I said listen when you get to feeling bad you open up Psalms and read so I, I think he will do that when it's just him and he doesn't have anybody to impress I think he'll read it and these are just of the unseen things that uh, you know people from YouTube land don't get to witness um, and don't even know what's going on people are messaging me you know you've been distracted you've gotten off your path um, you who doesn't want you in 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 Hawaii, you were distracted. You're you're in delusion. You're you need to get out. And you, what they don't see is all the little moments where who is using us as a vessel, as a connecting point, if you will, to to hug somebody. Even my mother-in-law didn't know she was being used as a vessel. But Jason came over. And he's been very, very emotional lately, guys. He's just up and down roller coaster. And he walked in come to pick me up to go with him. And uh, my mother-in-law was standing there. <laughs> and um, they had a moment together. She was just meeting him. And um, he just, he needed a mom to hug him. And so he asked her. <laughs> they were in there hugging. She started crying. He was crying. But you was using her as his arms a motherly hug right and uh they actually something happened in my doorway there with uh with you who were using my mother-in-law and she didn't even possibly even know it or even know why right now she's she has a connection with jason he's concerned about him and i think that he did something right he used her same as you used darla um ministering in um, me is it Jason's wife that's Jewish? Yes, Dana. Can can she read Hebrew? Um, I think she can a little bit. She didn't. She didn't like go to yeshiva and, and was like in religious studies and stuff. She grew up in a in a religious family, and that became uh, basically uh, what they um, not reform, but just kind of uh, secular. Just they're not religious. Uh, they did Hanukkah and things like that, and they stayed away from the Christians, but um, no curly cues and black hats and things like that. It was more of a reformer kind of family um, that she's from. She was taught by, by her grandmother, Christians are bad. You stay away from the Christians. And that, that typical kind of Jewish upbringing. Was you going to say something, darling? Did I interrupt you? I'm sorry. No, you didn't interrupt me, but I did have some things I wanted to share that have been on my heart. And actually, I do want to say something about, you were saying, Jonathan, where we've, we've had a particular um, person uh, come against that we are, we are losing our focus and things like that. I mean, I, there is no way for anybody to know what anybody else is doing in their whole day <laughs> to judge if, if you, who is not, you know, to judge you as servant on the other side of the earth or 5,000 miles away or something. There's no way for anybody to know what everybody's doing every single second of the day. But Yahuwah is using us. I'm sure you guys have probably experiencing in your own lives, like um, Yahuwah's word just comes bursting out of your mouth. Like you can't stop it. It's coming out, right? Have you guys experienced that at all? Yeah. I know what happens to me. Yeah, right? Yes, it um, happens. I'm, I'm seeing, I, I got into something on Facebook with, uh, with somebody today. They had a post about, um, it, was, it was a Christian post about not eating. Um, it, it's not a sin not to eat or to eat um, unclean animals, but it's also not a sin to, to eat clean animals only. So that was the that was the gist of the post, and um, obviously that post is going to attract some some Christians to are upset with people for going starting to eat kosher. Um, and eventually, the, I tried to I tried to wake up a particular Christian person and point them in the right direction to start getting some truth. Um, 
they were having none of it. Eventually, he, he said that I was sinning. I was lost in sin. And, um, and then he said also that um, I, was, I was like this really high blasphemer or something. And so I, then so I'm, I'm trying to dialogue, right? Like it's not necessarily for the person that, that's, that I'm responding to. Maybe it's for others that are going to read the response. You never know where Ephraim's going to be. Like I love what Paula shared this morning. Um, in or afternoon for you guys in Zoom, I mean uh, in hip chat about this opportunity she had to speak to one of her coworkers that came asking her questions. That's an Ephraim response, and I was so excited to read it. I just thought, see, this is something that that the sister that's um, coming down on us about we've lost our touch or our target or our, our purpose in life. These are the kinds of things that um, that are coming out of this ministry and out of Paula's ministry, um, where Yahuwah's putting that person there. She's not. At, she might not be yet out um, feeding five thousand this morning um, and creating, you know, food for all those with a few loaves and fish. However, Yahuwah sent somebody to her um, that needed to know what she knew, and so she did that. Maybe Maybe somebody else is feeding thousands this morning, but Paula was talking to the one person who was sent to her and the person whose son said that he's here too. So that was such an exciting story. Obviously, the Ruach HaKadosh is all over that. But anyway, with the, with the man that was, um, was accusing me of sinning, I, I asked him, I tried to challenge him. Maybe he did take me up on it. Um, I hope he did. I hope he will. But I said, what is the definition of sin? Since he was accusing me of sinning, I wanted to know what, you know, do you know what sin is? Like, these are the basics. We need to know what sin is. Like, if we don't or we forgot in our modules what the definition for sin is, we need to remind ourselves, what is the whole definition of sin? And it's mostly about being an offense to Yahuwah. But it can also be being an offense to a person. A person can basically, like, put themselves in Yahuwah's position and take offense um, so that is a definition. Um, I just think it's so important. Recently, I looked up the meaning of a word, and this is one of those um, one of those things that kind of drives people crazy. Where uh, they, it's right on the tip of their tongue, but they can't remember it. They can't find it. So you guys have probably heard me go on about this, but um, the particular word was in Strong's Concordance, and it was something like chesed, which is loving, merciful kindness. Um, it was in that kind of a definition, or it could have been under imuna, um, which is fidelity and surety, um, trustworthiness. That's where we get the word amen. Um, it wasn't either of those, because I, I revisited them, and I can't find the word, so it's driving me a little nuts. But um, if I were a pastor of a a congregation. I think um, such as you are, Michael, I would maybe consider just, let's just take one word. Okay. It's kindness. Now we're going to go find out what it means in Hebrew. I thought I would read this to you because I think it's important. This is not the one I'm looking for, but it's close. Um, the one I, I am and was looking for, it says something of the nature that when we obey Yahuwah, all blessings come our way. But when we don't obey him, when we're not walking into that sort of a relationship with him where we are, we are true to him, that all these curses are opened up to us. It just said that straight up and strong. So I'm trying to find it because it was written very well. This one is chesed, which is kindness. Toward Elohim, piety, rarely by opposition, it's reproof or beauty. Chesed as a noun means loving kindness, fast love. Um, favor, mercy, trustworthiness, goodness, or pleasantness, and devotion. It's used 240 times in the Tanakh and especially frequent in the, in the Psalms. The term is one of the most important in the vocabulary of the Tanakh, theology, and ethics. In general, one may identify three basic meanings of the word. So remember, we're talking about our English word kindness here. Um, let me find out where I was. Three basic, three basic meanings, strength, steadfastness, and love. Any understanding of the word that fails to suggest all three inevitably loses some of its richness. 
Amen. Love by itself easily becomes sentimentalized or universalized apart from the covenant. How many times have we heard, all you need is love, 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 love. You, um, God is love, you know, and then that's the end of it. Yet strength or steadfastness suggests only the fulfillment of legal or other obligations. So without love, you've just got something that's kind of legal and, and, um, and focuses on obligation. The word refers primarily to mutual and reciprocal rights and obligations between the parties of a relationship, especially Yahuwah and Yasharel. But chesed is not only a matter of obligation, it is also of generosity. It is not only a matter of loyalty, but also of mercy. The weaker party seeks the protection and blessing of the patron and protector, but he may not lay absolute claim to it. The stronger party remains committed to his promise, but retains his freedom, especially with regard to the manner in which he will implement those promises. Chesed implies personal involvement and commitment in a relationship between the rule or beyond the rule of law. So it's about the relationship under, uh, underneath or above the law. Um, marital love is often related to chesed. Marriage certainly is a legal matter and there are legal sanctions for infractions yet the relationship if sound far transcends more uh, mere legalities the prophet Hosea applies the analogy of Yahuwah's chesed to Yasharel within the covenant hence devotion is sometimes the single English word best capable of capturing the nuance of the original so devotion is actually a better word than kindness however writers often or, I'm sorry, Hebrew writers often underscored the element of steadfastness or strength by pairing chesed with emet, emet, which is truth or reliability, and emuna, which is trustworthiness. I'm using trustworthiness as opposed to the word faithfulness here. Biblical usage frequently speaks of someone doing, showing, or keeping chesed. The concrete content of the word is especially evident when it is used in the plural. Elohim's mercies, kindnesses, or trustworthinesses are his specific concrete acts of redemption in fulfillment of his promise. Um, let's see. An example is in Isaiah 55, 3. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Chesed, both Elohim and man as its subject, when man is the subject of chesed, the word usually describes the person's kindness or loyalty to another. Only rarely is the term applied explicitly to man's affection or fidelity toward Elohim. The clearest example is probably Jeremiah 2.2, 2, Go and cry in the ears of Yerushalayim, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, I remember thee, the kindness of your youth, the love of your espousals when you went after me in the wilderness. Man exercises chesed toward various units within the community, toward family and relatives, but also to friends, guests, masters, and servants. Chesed toward the lowly and needy is often specified. The scriptures prominently uses the term chesed to summarize and characterize a life of sanctification within and response to the covenant. Thus, Hosea 6.6 6 states that Elohim desires mercy and not sacrifice, um, trustworthiness living in addition to worship. Similarly, Micah 6.8 features chesed in the prop, but summary of scriptural ethics. And what does Yahuwah require of you but to love mercy? Be, and then, um, let's see, behold, all these uses with man as subject, however, stand the repeated references to Elohim's chesed. It is one of his most central characteristics. Elohim's loving kindness is offered to his people who need redemption from sin, enemies, and troubles. A recurrent refrain describing Elohim's nature is abounding plenteous in chesed. The entire history of Yahuwah's covenantal relationship with Yasharel can be summarized in terms of chesed. It is the one permanent element in the flux of covenantal history. Even the creation is the result of Elohim's chesed. His love lasts for a thousand generations, indeed forever, especially in the refrains of certain psalms, such as Psalm 136. Words used in synonymous parallelism 
but chesed help to define and explain it. The word most commonly associated with chesed is emet, fidelity and reliability. And of course, that's a two-way relationship. Let your loving kindness, your chesed, and your truth emet continually preserve me. Emuna, with a similar meaning, is also common. He has remembered his mercy, his chesed, and his truth emuna toward the house of Yashrael. This emphasis is especially appropriate when Elohim is the subject because his chesed is stronger and more enduring than man's. Etymological investigation suggests that chesed's primitive significance may have been strength or permanence. If so, a puzzling use of chesed in Isaiah 40 verse 6 would be explained. All flesh is grass and all the goodliness thereof <clears throat> is as the flower of a field. So this has to do with the um, permanence or strength. The association of chesed with covenant keeps it from being misunderstood as mere providence or love for all creatures. It applies primarily to Elohim's particular love for his chosen and covenanted people. Covenant also stresses the reciprocity of the relationship. But since Elohim's chesed is ultimately beyond covenant it will not ultimately be abandoned even when the human partner is unfaithful and must be disciplined since its final triumph and implementation is eschatological chesed can imply the goal and end of all salvation history and it also means favor i mean darla yes sir i can tell you one trick you could use um yeah. Because in the in the Renew Covenant, the um, the definition of sin in the letters of John, it says sin is law breaking. And if sin is law breaking, and the law is done away, then there is no sin. And John is a liar, and Yehoshua died in vain. So that would be, could be a good answer. The law wasn't done away with. Well, Sorry. The Ten Commandments yeah. are still in effect. Yeah, the law, the law wasn't done away. No, you got people. that's where people get mixed up. The yeah. 613 laws, most of them were for the temple, for the priest, and for the women. Um, when You know, when it's like their time in a month and stipulations like that. So most, most of the 613 laws are not in effect because, for one, we don't have a temple, and everybody's got a Bible, so, you know, the priest deal, that's done away with, and you got to add women and children in there. So really, the only thing we have are the Ten Commandments, and what does he say about the Ten Commandments? Love trumps most of them commandments, so as long as you have love, you're following the guidelines of them Ten Commandments. Yeah. No, he's, yeah, in, in the in the light of the Torah, right? Not all not all of the laws apply to everyone, but we are supposed to observe his statutes and his ordinances. For instance, Amen. the Scripture says, "These are my days." Notice, I said "my." This is <laughs> was speaking. He said, "These are my days." We will observe them, and all. Notice I said all of your generations. That doesn't mean up to Yeshua, and then Yeshua is nailed it to the cross, and he didn't say that. He right. said all, all your generations. So that would be us now. If it's important to him then, it's important to him now. He says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was, is. So um, in the effects of statutes and ordinance, we're, we're supposed to, Observe them, right? Amen. It doesn't put Amen. you under the law. It doesn't mean that you got a yoke of the law under you. That's a bunch of hogwash. These <laughs> Christian preachers are trying to, you know, bamboozle you. That that's Do a Christian preacher putting his own opinion in. Right. He's Michael's right. You should have said keep my commandments, and <laughs> unfortunately, you know, Christians are nailing that to the cross. And uh, are under the once saved, un always saved kind of thing. Even some in my family, my uncle Joel, the preacher, once saved, always saved. 
and has a son living in sin that believes he's good to go because he was saved when he was 10. Right? So there's a lot of deception in, in the church. God, That's a dangerous word. It is. Actually, it's, it's somewhere in the, new, in the renewed covenant. It says those who are being saved. So it's a process also. It is a process. It's not, it not, it's not just a one-time experience. You have to, right. you have to get, get out of things. Yeah. You're right. See, it takes some time to clean people up. That's, that's where people get mixed up. It says that you shall be saved. It doesn't mean that you're saved right now. Okay, you're not saved right now. It says you shall be saved, meaning that if you live according to the way Yeshua told you to live, you follow the law, you follow the feast days, when you go in front of him, you will be saved. So many people are taking it as, I'm already saved, I'm saved. I you're not, you're not. It says, I shall, you shall be saved. Present tense, not now. You know what I mean? That's how they get all mixed up. And that's why the once saved, always saved. They're like, oh, I'm saved, I, you know, I'm saved. They take it out of context. What's really nice is to, that I think the Father uh, shares and shows us, is, is that if you've got somebody that, that's going to frown their nose up to 613 laws from the Torah, even though there's, there's really more in the, in the Tanakh, um, we can start with the 10. Most people can't get past verse 3. <laughs> They got a problem right there. So um, we can start with the 10. Let's start. Let's, let's find a place to start because those didn't go away. And usually if, if somebody won't receive Yahuwah's name, they don't want anything to do with it. They're not even going to look at it. The ten and there, there are actually so more commandments. Sorry. More commandments in the, in the renewed covenant than in the old. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyways, yeah, tell them that. Anyways, you guys want to see something? Absolutely. Yeah. It's I'm not gonna um share the, the whole thing, but just give you guys a bit of a sneak preview. And this this has uh made a believer out of me of codes. Um first I'm, I just want to show you I, I started this one after I finished um the other one uh that I showed you what uh, last week, I guess. Um, anyways, this one is about uh, Urim and Thummim. And I found the, the proper spelling for it in the, the Bible hub. And it's uh, Exodus 28, verse 30. And the spelling I used was, here is the Urim here. And at the um, way down at the bottom, it has the Thummim. Okay. Now, You'll see before it has the Urim, there's Aleph Ta. Aleph Ta, then Ha, the Urim. Then there's a Vav, which means and. And then there's Aleph Ta again. And then the Thummim. Okay. So I took that exact uh, spelling, including the Aleph Ta, because that's the beginning and the end. Um, Yahuwah. So now I'm going to um, stop that share because I don't know how to go from one to another any other way. So I'm not, I, I have not annotated it, but this blew my mind, guys. Um, in the red is Aleph Ta Urim. In the red with the black lettering is Aleph Ta Thummim. The exact same skip two rows apart okay like wow. if, if there was nothing else in this table i would have been blown away the urim and the tumim and connecting them jonathan earlier you were talking about the connectors and i'm going i think i have to share a little bit of this because there's connectors all through this um you see uh the urim and the tumim they're connected with two vavs. Look at this, going from the aleph to the aleph. There's a, top, a, a vav and a vav. Connecting them, because vav, you guys know. Is a connector. Of, it's a connector. Yeah. And then um, 
I'm not going to, I'm only going to share just um, a snippet, okay? Um, because I want to annotate it before I go into all of it. But yeah. I mean, that, that maybe that should be all I show you because this is, oh man. And then, okay, well, I'm going to share maybe five or six words. Here's the ephod here in the, the green, the dark green with the white letter. There's overwhelming the, evidence that these codes. The ephod. The ephod. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so it's going through both the Yerm and the, the Tumim, the ephod. <laughs> and, and then down the bottom left, um, this blue, starting with the, the hay, this is the breastplate. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to say that, but that's the breastplate. Um, that's the Hoshin. The Hoshin. Thank you. Hoshin. Ho Hoshin. Okay. And then we have Yeshua here in the, the purple. Yod, Shin, Vav, Ayin. And it's crossing over and sharing the Vav in mediator. This green. Yeah. Because that's it's exactly sharing. what the high priest was <laughs> wearing this thing, guys. And people, that blows people's mind. They're like, what's it? What's an ephod? Actually, it's a communication device, kind of like some bling. The high priest wore. He spoke <laughs> the most high. He communicated, gave him a message. And what do we see here? We're seeing overwhelming evidence just based on the number of vertical anomalies on this alone, guys. Statistically, it's impossible. You cannot find this in any work of, of words. Um, a divine hand has put this here. It's mm -hmm. screaming, just like your DNA. If you look at your DNA on a molecular level, it is screaming intelligent design. Amen. And the, the last word I'll share, and then I'll just close it down and share it when I have it. Mm, annotated. I'm so excited uh -huh. for you this on this oh, it's just, I'm I'm telling you, like... Uh, I was a believer before, right? But now this is overwhelming. That's um, what I meant by he, I, he grabs a hold of something and he, and he reveals it to you. And he's like, I'm going to take you a little bit further. And show you something. <laughs> you get like chicken skin from that. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that the, the, the Urim and the Tumim were for asking questions of Yahuwah. Now, I don't know how it all operated. Um, I think they're still around. That's the thing is, I, I, I yeah. think they're still, I think maybe the the priests may maybe still have them. But anyways, I'm not going there right now. The, the thing is, is they would find out from Yahuwah with certainty what to do. Right. Like, um, so I, I've, certainty is in here twice. Hallelujah. And, and it, it starts, um, it starts with the Vav. Uh, Nobody amazing. outside <laughs> this field with an opinion is going to convince me that these codes are not real and Yahuwah is using them to communicate. Mm. Amen. So uh, this Vav in the teal, and then it skips over. I think it's a 16 skip, but anyways, I'm not sure. Um, but it crosses over the access term, the, the Urim. So certainty goes here. And then it connects with the vobs. Look at that again. With certainty, it's connecting with certainty. And that's that's all I'm going to share for now because it, it takes. That's um, a great teaser. It'll be easier once I have it annotated. That is a great, great job. Uh, well, sorry. I said great job. Oh man, it just it just the, listen. When I looked up, um, a, a beautiful thing about keys to the Bible is you can. Have your search term, and then you can um, put in another term, and then you can ask it to only show you the the tables that have those two words in it. Yeah, and only week. one, uh, only once. Okay, they showed up three times, but the the other two times they were actually in the plain text because it does have it. Aleph ta yur ha yurim, and then aleph. You know what I mean. Um, so the only other time it showed up was this, and it was a skip of 7434. Four. So I don't know the significance of that. I've looked up the Bible verses that uh, they cross over. There, there are some, um, you know, 
uh, significant things, but I think um, nothing as significant as just the, those Yerm and Thummim showing up at the exact same <laughs> skip. That just will forever blow my mind thinking about that. Keys so. to the Bible. Ain't that what Jonathan was talking about last week? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the programs that uh, it's the one you're about to get. Um, ironic, they call it uh, Keys to the Bible because you really get an opening that, no, that other people are, are not able to experience. And that's unfortunate because um, it is a very complex book with deep, deep uh, hidden knowledge in it. That's a fact. There's no getting around that. Statistically, it's impossible to see what we're seeing. Um, it's a unique opportunity. And uh, it wasn't around when Chris and I started. You know, wasn't nobody teaching others how to do this and enabling, putting the code program in your hand and, and, you know, helping you along. So I'm thankful that we got people that are here, you know, getting this knowledge and, and um, learning this skill and, and extracting codes that, you know, are evidence of a creator. Yes. Hey, Jonathan, Brian, Jonathan? Brian's got a question there. Hold okay. on. You're, uh, you're muted. And uh, there it is. Okay, there I go. What does annotated mean? I, I'm not saying that right. When she says I have to have it, the code. Annotated? She's going to annotate it, which means she's going to she's going to take a snapshot of of her work and put in the English translations next to her work, so that when she displays it, people can quickly see. That can't speak Hebrew or read Hebrew. They can quickly uh, see what those words are. Um, okay. So that that takes a little bit of time. Because you take your work into either Windows Paint or whatever you have on your computer, and you and you manually are doing this. So she wants to take the time to manually put in the uh, the words in there, so that that uh, you know it's quickly we can go through it and, and see um, what it are, are the. Uh, <laughs> that was a great question. Yeah, it is. And if you listen, if you don't know something or what it, if if there's terminology, and that's something we probably need to spend time on is jargon and terminology because there may be terms that are just out there people are using you may not know what it is and so uh, if you have questions of what something is feel free to ask don't don't hesitate there's no stupid question right um legitimately there are some terms that um i didn't quite frankly know what to call things and i i made it up right so it's it's a code searcher term like abacus effect is not a proper, you know, you, will, you probably won't hear the rabbis talking about advocacy effect, even though it happens in their work and stuff. Um, I don't know what they call it, but when I see that, and I see that anomaly where it's basically like an abacus where you've got these beads on a line, you can't jump those beads, but you can permutate in different permutations and create different things, right? You could do the same thing in a Hebrew scripture. Permutating letters will create new words sometimes just the fact that they're sitting next to each other you have a word that is not read normally in the in the line but is there if you're looking for something in the code and, and it happens to be that anomaly of the last three letters of one scripture and the first two of another and you have that word there that is hidden there right in plain sight up until the time of ezra there was no punctuation points between letters in the scriptures, right? This, this encoded those Hebrew scriptures because it wasn't easily read if you just unfurled those, those scrolls, everything running to the, together. So, it, so the, the story is that up until Ezra's time, it was very difficult to read scriptures because they were basically encoded without punctuation. Because of the fact that, that Hebrew is so easily permutated in other words, the grouping of letters to make words, it is literally an, an infinite thing. The, the Hebrew letter is a special anomaly. <laughs> but Ezra actually did what we see. Let me, let me take you to a table and show you what I'm talking about. Now, you may wonder why are there black letters and why are there blue letters? Glad you asked that. And that's because 
if they were all black letters, we couldn't read it. We would not be able to read it. It would just be black letters. There would be no spaces between the words. So the scriptures were like this up until the time of Ezra when he and other scribes worked in restoration, incidentally. The time of Ezra and Nehemiah is a restoration time, which is where we're going to be or have been uh, restoring, right? So Ezra goes in, he puts in the places, and we can now read the scriptures and, and know what words are where. Uh, but up until that point, you can permutate infinitely and probably get lost in a, in a matrix of Hebrew letters that was, because of that fact, basically encoded. Um, isn't that kind of crazy? A lot of people don't know that. Uh, they just think, oh, we got the Bible. It's, it's always been here. Nope. It's been concealed, revealed, concealed again with uh, the translations to, to Latin and then all the, you know, gymnastics they did with languages. And then here we are in the end time and restoration and he's restoring everything back to where it was. Right. Uh, it's an amazing time to be here. Right. So, um, I've had people ask me, why is it blue letters and black letters? And that's why, um, you can actually go in and change all of these to all black and see what I'm talking about. If you ever want to play around and do that, um, and see, <laughs> it's very difficult to know what is what when they're all the same color. <clears throat> Look at Petey there, just sleeping. I had no idea he was there. <laughs> He's chilling. Can I show you guys something? Absolutely. I took this off of is everybody okay that I share today's class? I got um, YouTubers who wanting to see some codes, and we got some pretty cool stuff in here today. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah, not a problem. Hey, Rick, can I say something real quick before you start? Because I just an ending thing on Ann's table, okay. real quick. Um, I just wanted to say because I don't think the uh, the translation came out is that um, the two words that she was looking up. Uh, are they're translated to lights and perfections, um, the lights and the perfections, and the olive ta at the beginning of those words means the strength of the covenant. So we were just talking about that covenantal relationship, this lights and perfections, this this uh, form of communication between um, the high priest and Yahuwah. It was based on the strength of that covenant relationship. So I just wanted to make that point in case anybody didn't know what those words were in English. Thanks, Darla. Yeah, again, great table, Ann. Great table. Thank you, Darla. Um, so I, I got to open up and say a couple of things. One is, is I got this from a guy named uh, Dr. Eli something or other, but it's really good. And I wanted to share it. Um, but there is a, I'm going to need to qualify it. There is some conjecture in here, but if the guy is right, it's, it's a mind blow, which is why I want to share it with you today. So let's read the scripture here. It says there, they crucified him. This is about the crucifixion. I wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Yehudi, translated the Jews. Now we know the 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 the, the word for Jesus and things like that. We we get that part. Many of the Yehudi read, read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near a city, and it was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and in Latin and in Greek. So this is coming from John, the Book of John. So the chief priests of the Yehudi said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Yehudi, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Yehudi. Pilate answered, I've written what I've written. So let me read on. It says, um, Pilate rightfully felt that the Jewish leaders had manipulated him in order, ordering Jesus's execution. Um, and I, we can go to John 19, and I can show you, and it's, it's pretty much true. 
Um, as a result, he wanted to get back at him. Like he was, like he, he, he had a tick under his skin about it. Hit, hitting, the, hurt, <clears throat> hit, hitting them where it hurts the most. Pilate understood that the temple leaders had falsely used the son of Gimbal Dalit against Jesus so that he turned their manipulation back on them when he recorded his criminal charge against Jesus. So what did he do? The, the text of the inscription about Jesus' crime was placed on a sign that was to be nailed above his head. And this is a picture of, of a, from a guy named Fra Angelico. It's from the 1500s that suggests an interesting speculation about this inscription. So Fran, Fra, Fra Angelico had a lifelong fascination with the written word. The accuracy of Greek, of his Greek and Latin and Hebrew inscriptions reveal his participation in linguistic studies that flourished in Rome and, and, and Florence. In, in this crucifixion painting, he reconstructed what might, and this is, that's the operative word, I want to be very clear about that, might have been the original Hebrew written on that sign. The inscription in the painting read in Hebrew, and this is the, this is the Hebrew, I, sh I should make this bigger. Um, so if you, if you um, put this into Google Translate, it comes up and says this. Now, here's, where, here's the conjecture part. Fra Angelica added an and, and we know what an and is. It's the connector, right? Because grammatically, it was very possibly, if not probably, the way the original text appeared. So how did Pilate return the favor to the temple rulers who forced him into condemning Jesus to die? He did so by writing the statement of Jesus' guilt in Hebrew in such a way that it actually portrayed Jesus as Yahuwah himself. How? Here's the sentence. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, in Hebrew. So that's this. But look at look at the look at the acrostic. So embedded in that crime is the acrostic Yahuwah, just like Kaduri. Just like Kaduri. Except Kaduri's was Yahushua. The acrostic form by taking the first letter of each word of the sentence plus the um, plus the, the, the vav, the king of the Jews, is Yahuwah, the covenant name for Israel's Gimeldal. This is why the temple leaders were so unhappy with how Pilate changed the, the verse. Do you guys get that? Did I lose yeah, you? it's a it's an acronym. It's not so it wouldn't be an equal letter distance skip. And actually, no. um, it's not it's not um, it's not it's not um, if this might be or this could be. Um, even the the archaeologists I've seen speaking about this. I have a video on my channel um, about this. Um, this is historically true that this was what was recorded. Yeshua Nasri Melep Ayyuhudi. And and if you use the first letters of each one of those, it's Yodhe Bave. So that is wild. I, I believe that is a fact that this that it's not just this could possibly be. Because they're they're you know archaeologists and anthropologists, uh, Jewish believing anthropologists that say that this is a fact, that this is what was on there. And but their their story is that Pilate had no idea that he was doing this. That he just put Yeshua Hanatsri, King of the, the the Jews. But that's the effect that happened. Yote Bob. Either way, it's a mind blow to me. It is a mind blow. It's crazy, man. That's. I saw this earlier this week, actually, on Facebook. Someone had brought it up. And he said, but actually, it's not that way because there is no wah. So um, I suspect that there really was a wah. I don't have proof of that, but I suspect. 
it that it is as you're showing it. Uh, you know, like I said, there's there's an element of conjecture, yeah. but it's backed it up by, be, yeah. um, you know, it's backed up by this painting, and you know, and this guy was a pretty learned guy uh, in three different languages. Yeah, and so I. I haven't researched enough in it enough to know. Um, I just haven't, but and that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm opening it up, you know, because of, you know, I, the BS detector stuff. I want to make sure that what, what we're saying. Rick, can you blow up the picture so we can see it a little better? And it's really uh, blurred. it's really blurred. Could you okay, also put fine. a link uh, to it in hip chat? Sure. Because that is um, very cool. If that is legit, it's amazing. Can you go up with it? It, it? It's not going to make a difference, Harold. It's not going to make a difference. Oh, I don't see the top. Oh, it's probably because of your computer. There you go. So where is that painting now? Anybody know? No. We could probably find out. My son was just in Italy, uh, in England and Italy, and he saw a lot of uh, paintings in, in Italy. I wonder if he saw this one, like, at the Vatican or somewhere. I'm sure that that if you saw this in person, that this, this would um, tie out to... Um, to this. I'm sure that that would be the case. Because right. that's what he that's what he came out that's what he came out and said. This is what I'm this is what I'm putting here. Because this is what I believe is what was said. But when you do that, you you get this acrostic and I just think that I, it, it it defies it defies coincidence. It defies coincidence. Anyway, that's all I got. At, at least it's so highly likely that it's, you can wonder. It's highly likely. And beautiful. I agree. And what is the scripture reference? Um, the gospel? Um, John 19, was it? Um, John 19. Um, 19, 19. 1919, yeah. Okay, thanks. Even in the Peshitta, there's more than one Peshitta, so it can be checked. And these were, these were. I sense there are jaws dropping. <laughs> it happened at the time. <laughs> So Jonathan thinks that this actually happened. Darla thinks that. I don't know. Me too. You do. You you as well. I think so as well. I got a I got a video. Um, let me see what it is on my channel. I forgot what it's called. I think it happened that way. Even if um, the watt is missing in the writing, I believe it would happen that way. Yeah, I got it. Other side of the cross is what it's called. Um, this, is, this is a Hebrew production, uh, Rick. I'll put this down in the chat box. I don't okay. know if you've ever seen this. Um, Probably not. This Probably is not. really good. This is really good. It might blow your mind in some of the things in here, especially when you when you figure out. God, a lot of Christians don't know this. Remember Barabbas? Mm -hmm. and Barabbas, the murderer. Yeshua took the place of a murderer on the cross between two thieves, the more serious crime. Barabbas was not just called Barabbas. He had a name, and his name was Yeshua Barabbas son of Joseph 
So Barabbas was also called Yeshua, son of Joseph. Christians don't know that, but it's an actual fact. Um, Barabbas actually, when he was released, and the, 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 the other part of the story for people that don't know, Barabbas didn't just continue on in his life that he was. When, when the events happened that they did, he actually changed and actually became a follower of Yeshua um, because of that. I'm going to put the, um, the link to that. It's called Other Side of the Cross. It's a Hebrew production. Very good. So what I want to do is I sort of want to rewrite this, obviously, you know, for the names, but also to clarify the, the implications and, and things like that. Um, which is why I put it in Google. I'm not done working with it yet, but it's just, it's there and I'll, I'll post the original link, you know, so you guys can take a look and, um, you know, and then I'll eventually put this up on codesearcher.com. Cool. That's all I got. Anybody else got anything you want to share? No. I have a question. John, for Jonathan, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, just about keys to the Bible. I have something, ever since I started this program, I haven't dug this out and, and looked at it. But um, anyways, ooh, I don't know if the lighting's good. I bought this like 15 years ago. It's, um, it's called Bible Codes Plus. And I tinkered around with it like over the years but I honestly haven't taken it out and looked, checked out the CD-ROM on the computer since I started this course. Oh. But I got this thought last week. I wonder if, um, like, I don't remember the glitches when I was playing around with it. Um, do you, the one that you have, like, and I think this is a pre. It's, it either came before Keys of the Bible, but it, it's the same. It is the same thing. Really? So what I'm wondering is... Maybe that because we just downloaded it, maybe a glitch was in there from that, like maybe with the hard copy. So I'm going to try this out maybe in the next week or two and see if it has glitches. We actually have you more have problems have... with the CD. Yeah, we, we've yeah, we you got did? one. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. We, we ordered, you uh, had more uh, problems. 50 or 60 hard copies. That's why. We, oh we no! I mean, it's not like we're just giving you pirated software. We actually own copies of it that that um, you know we had to convert to downloads because the um, it was it's very glitchy with their disc. I don't know what what and that may have been their downfall. I don't know. Maybe it's because they don't okay. update it. I don't know what it is, but it's it's very glitchy. And it'd be interesting to see what that is, what and how it works um, in comparison. Um, to, to the ones we have. It's called Plus. Yeah, but I think it's the same. I think it's made by the same people. Like, I I think it either came before or after. Like, they're both on the same Quite website. Possible. Very, very possible. Um, I wonder if it's any better. I think the one that we have is supposed to be the point two. So there is a one before, a version before this. I'm trying to see a year it came out, but it, it just says Bible Codes Plus. Search the Bible. Okay. But they're both on the same website. <laughs> the other one has keys to the Bible. But when I, yeah, from my recollection, but I'll, I'll have, I, I honestly haven't put it in my computer since I started this program. So, because I already had the two to play around with. Yeah. Just curious to see if it has the glitches, if it came out before or after keys, I don't know. But anyways, just a thought. If I was wondering if you had used the hard copy. Okay. Um, All right. uh, not, not of, of plus, but we do have hard copies of uh, keys to the Bible. And, um, yeah. Uh, even, we even called the, the, the people up and tried to see if we could get Developing. an updated version and it's not supported anymore and they were quite so sort of shocked that it was anybody you know, interested in them and I was like what are you talking about man this is the greatest thing it's huge discoveries are being made you know we're anyway uh, it would be nice to have an engineer someone design our own customized you know 
customer, what we would like to see user friendly uh, to someone other than um, fluent in Hebrew, right? Because for the most part, for since the seventies, it was only Hebrew scientists and uh, rabbis that were searching codes. I want to say something about the uh, Barabbas that you mentioned, Jonathan. I'm yeah. um, like in Aramaic, that's Baraba. So when we get that S on there, that's coming from from the Greek and the Latin. You're absolutely words right. Words like Leviticus. Yeah. Yeah. So what you were saying, um, you know, that should have been that gave me goosebumps just to hear you say it. Yeah. Um, and I knew it, but yeah. just to hear it, the fact that here's Yahushua hanging on you know, the stake. And here's this other guy that was released, right? Barabbas was released. But it's Barabbas, it's son of the father. Yeah. And, that, and you'll see in Aura, um, on the other side of the cross video that I posted, um, that's what they, the, the Jewish Hebrew speakers are. They do not say Barabbas, like I said. They say Barabbas. Uh, that steps the Hebrew way of saying it. Right, Aramaic is the bar is son where Ben is the son in Hebrew. So if it was just in Hebrew, it would have been Benob. Okay. Has anybody else got anything you want to share? If I may, just real quick. Um, I shared it on HipChat a few hours ago. If you're real sensitive, don't follow up too closely on any of this. But, you know, there's groups of people who go out and search for and, and, and apprehend child sex traffickers mm. and sex traffickers. And uh, if you know the name, Craig Sawman Sawyer, um, He's involved in this one in Tucson right now that is, it's abhorrent beyond comprehension. And they need prayers. Um, follow up on it if you have a strong enough sense of sensibilities. Otherwise, just ask, ask Jehovah if you should be praying for them and, and if there's anything that you can do to help them. Um, it, it's it's really bad, and it looks like the Tucson police are involved as well, uh, which makes it that much worse because then there's there's no recourse for people. Um, we know that that which is done in darkness is going to be brought into the light, and these are those days, and and it, it's this is something that that really bothers me, and this is something that's close to my heart. So I just wanted to kind of bring it up and, and ask for prayer. And if, if Jehovah leads you to do anything else to help these guys out, women too, but, um, All right. yeah. anybody got Is anything this else? Is Phoenix or Tucson? Tucson. Mm. It's, 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 it's bad. Um, the day of, uh, reconcile is coming. The day of justice. The owner of the land. Yeah. Yeah. The owner of the land has ties to, uh, the, uh, Clinton foundation. So he who has an ear, let him hear. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? Guys? That's all. Thank you. All right, I want to thank everybody for being at the meeting today. Um, I'm going to probably upload this, parts of this, up to YouTube, uh, just so we'll they, they see that we are doing some codes. People think we're completely forgot about codes and all of this, so um, look for that. All right, we'll see you in the next meeting. Abba Yehu, we are once again thankful for this opportunity, Father. It's in spite of the things going on around us to gather in Your name give you glory, Father, and we just honor and love you. We thank you for your mercy and for your um, your way of salvation through your son, Yeshua. 
Uh, and we just love you, Father. Thank you for being there for us. And we just ask that you be with these students and go with them into the world, Father, and keep them protected from the enemy. Heal them if they are sick. Nurture them when they are weak, Father. Bring them back to us again. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. We love you guys. We'll be praying for you, brother. Well, pray for uh, us, but also pray for people in Guatemala and in Indonesia. Oh, definitely. All of them, man. This, it looks really bad in, in Guatemala. I'm, I'm thinking I got that. Guatemala, Israel, Syria, Hawaii. I got them all on the list. <laughs> the stress of the nations. We love you guys. Amen. Good to see you, Riku. We love you, brother. Nay the top. <laughs>